If we look at the other drawers, we can see some flight screen stripes, which are about 3 cm wide and glued onto the sides a bit lower than the edge of the wall. Today's mission, larvae escape measures. Prevent larvae from escaping from the lowest compost drawer of the aquaponic composter module, which holds liquid. Tip, inspiration from the other drawers will help. Okay, let's see. Last time Connor changed the drilled holes in the bottom of the compost drawers to a mesh which decreased the hole size but increased the amount of holes. This should actually prevent larvae from getting into the lowest drawer, but just in case we need to glue some guide rails in place. For the guide rails, we need something the larvae cannot stick to. I think fly screen will be essential and I think hot glue will be sufficient. Let's go back and select it here. Hot glue will dry quickly, which helps a lot when working on something with tension. Let's go. Okay, so like mentioned earlier, the compost module is basically a compost tower with three compost drawers and an additional drawer at the bottom, which holds liquid for 24 hours until it's washed into the aquaponic system. This is still in the experimental stage. This bottom drawer is a bit smaller than the compost boxes and has a hose attached. To gain access to it and to remove the hose, it is necessary to remove the compost drawers above it. With them gone, we can remove the leachate or warm tea basin now. We just need to be careful to not pull too strongly, otherwise the hose might detach. It wouldn't be that bad since there is no water in the drawer, but still it would mean we need some time to fix it again. The liquid collected in the drawer is basically warm tea, since the humus, the warmth created, is flooded with water, rinsing out the nutrients into the water. I hope this compost will solve the iron deficiency and overall strengthen the plants, especially since warm compost and aquaponic systems have about the same pH range. I think it would be good to use this opportunity with an empty compost housing to clean it from the inside. I will quickly select the vacuum and get this done. There are a lot of spider webs in here and lots of empty husks from hatched black soldier flies leaving behind their larval shell. I could not find any research about combining vermicompost or vermiponics with aquaponics. If you have some comments about this, feel free to let me know. Okay. So now what can we do as a lava escape mechanism? We could glue some fly screen onto the drawer, which will do exactly that. If we look at the other drawers, we can see some fly screen stripes, which are about 3 cm wide and glued onto the sides a bit lower than the edge of the wall. This worked quite well in the other drawers and it's a very important feature of the aquaponic composter module. If the larvae are wet and they get wet when the compost cycle is running, they are able to climb vertical walls and even crawl along the ceiling. They can't however stick to fly screen if it's made from cloth. This measure helped prevent the larvae from getting anywhere in the space and keep them contained in the composter boxes. Larvae was not supposed to get into the basin drawer, so I did not attach the fly screen guard previously. Let's add some of these guards onto the drawer. For this, we take this piece of fly screen mesh and glue the edges in place to hold it in place and to create some tension. We can use hot glue to attach the fly screen to the wall of the box. It is important to get a bubble tight seal, otherwise larvae will escape through the gap, making the guard useless. Hot glue is also not the best glue here, since it can detach if it gets too wet. But hot glue can easily be removed if it's necessary at a later point in time. For example, for cleaning, which is a bit more difficult with this guard in place. I was thinking about some removable frame, which holds in place uh, due to a tight fit. But si since the wall is a bit warped and the larvae are able to squeeze through the tiniest of holes, the hot glue method seemed safer. Once the screen is glued into place, we can simply cut out a rectangular shape from the middle, leaving behind a border of about 3 cm wide. After the inner material is removed, we can cut off the excess from the outer edges. Just to prevent leaks, I will add some more hot glue to the rough edges of the just trimmed fly screen. The contents of the drawer are filter balls, which are actually used to increase the surface area for the beneficial bacteria to grow on. 
due to the drainage of the drawers above and worms and lava wandering into this drawer, the media is full with mud, lava and worms. I don't like this, so the balls have to move into one of the upper drawers for now, since there are a lot of worms and eggs in the media, which I want to keep. I will put them in the fish tank or filter tank once the worms wandered off. The lowest drawer will hold mostly water from now on, which allows particles to be transferred into the fish tank. And also if lava and worms end up in this drawer, they will eventually end up as fish food. We will get over the water flow in detail when we attach the hose to the IBC fish tank or when we switch on the pump in a future episode. We can now put the drawers back into the composter housing. First the basin drawer to have enough space to feed the hose through the wall in the back of the wooden panel. It's a bit fiddly but luckily we just cleaned the interior here and there's a bit of wiggle room until the hose is straight again. Currently there are not enough plants in the system since it's not yet finished and therefore the composter module is not attached to the water cycle. Let's now put in the other drawers. This concludes today's mission. Subscribe for the next episode and leave some feedback in the comments below. You could also check out this video. Or if it's your birthday, maybe this one. Yeah,